Hey, baby. How you, doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I can't complain. I can't complain. You can't complain ever. I can't complain. You're looking good, I mean, you're looking I'm happy good. To see your face. I'm, happy to see your face. <laughs> I'm just so proud. Every time I see you, I'm just like, I like seeing your star journey going. How's it Very feeling good, for you right now? It's feeling good, man. I mean, it's another stepping stone. And I'm just I'm just happy to be here, man. I'm just happy to be here working and, and showing showing the magic. You know what I mean? So let's talk about, hold on, let's talk about the suit, because the suit is popping. Shout out to Sarah Rose Harrison, my stylist, man. She done a thing. But the suit is from Alawalia. Um, the rings are from Blue Marble, I believe. If I get it wrong, cut out. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, she done her thing. Man. She done her no, thing. you're looking good. You're looking good. So what? You know, like from Blue Story, the journey that you've been on, and now you've got your first like major league, where you're, the focus is about you. Is that pressure? Um, no, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting because it's 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 more learning curve. It's more it's more it's more room to play. It's more range to play. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, as actors, you always want to learn. So anything, like, anything that's similar to this, or things that might seem like pressure, it's just exciting because it's again, it's just you, you, you're, you're learning different things yeah. and in different experiences. So yeah, it was good, man. So what experience did you have that was different from Blue Story and the other projects that you've worked on? What did you learn about yourself as an actor in that in this space in this in Gas Up? I think with this, I think Gas Up is always centered around Ash, and it's more of his POV. So I kind of really had to involve myself. I mean, I was on set every single day from Monday to Friday, <laughs> just without it. Um, um, I really had to immerse myself, and not to say I didn't do that in Blue Story and the other roles I did, but this was more. This was very ascentric. You know what I mean? So I really had to just get into that, and I kind of discovered a different method into getting into my character. And obviously, I was working with my acting coach, so it was just more on the learning and improving my and sharpening my skills. And yeah, what was it like working with George? Because you know George is a is a legend, the OG in the game. What was it like working with him? What did you learn from working in his with him? Um, George, obviously, he's from, he come from a documentary background, but he wanted everything to be very authentic. Because I mean, he's come from a documentary background where everything is authentic. So he kind of just implemented that into guest up. And if he ever felt we were going over the top or things that were natural, he would allow us to reel it in. But obviously, at the same time, giving us room to play. So um, yeah, man, there he is over there. It was, it, was, it was a pleasure, man. It was, it was good to work with There's a certain scene that you played. I'm working with the rest of the Which one? There's a scene where you're on your own, yeah. reveling uh, in a moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No spoilers. Oh, man. Yo, that scene was one of the, the most hardest things for me to do, you know? Because everybody was in the room, no spoilers, but everybody was in the room watching me. And I was just like, you know what? Forget it. Like, you're, you ain't Steven right now. You're Ash. So become Ash and just... Just, just give them a show. You know what I mean? But it was good, man. It was good yeah, fun. I was, I was, I was like, yeah. That I know this is difficult because like pride, and you've got to know that people are watching it. So I think you did very well. I believed you in that moment. You were very, very happy in that moment, guys. You got what? Yeah. But I forgot to ask you. Introduce yourself and tell us who you play in Gas Up. My name is Stephen Odebola, and I play Ash, aka Sparks, in Gas Up. And mm, what's the last thing I can say so far? What's been the highlight? of your career um there's been so many man there's been so many i mean even this is a highlight in itself i mean just being here and being able to celebrate celebrate the magic and the greatness that we created of all these wonderful people is one of many highlights so let me say that let me say that i mean being here with you is a highlight he's so sweet <laughs> I, mean, I try i try <laughs> but i'm here man Thank you so much, Stephen. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. You're looking lovely. And you too. You look amazing. <laughs> We've just done this, but anyway, um, is this your first red carpet? This is my first red carpet. How are you feeling? What's it like? It's it's exciting, you know. I came in with a little butterfly, so I was just like, oh, okay, this is how it is. It's I love it though. I love it. Yeah. When you were aspiring to be an actress, what were you visualising? Were you visualising winning the award or were you visualising the red carpet? I'm a boo-boo, I think it was both. Yeah. I, think it was, I think it was the red carpet to the award, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All in did, one. You have, did you have your speech prepared? Do you want me to do it now? Yeah. I just want to, I just, oh, this is, wow! That, and so many of you as well! Oh. Thanks everyone. I just I appreciate you so much, and I'm just so thank you for this. Thank you so much. I can't I can't say thank you to everyone right now, but thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Amazing. So, okay, yeah. talk to us about your role in Gastop. What do you, who do you play, and 
how did the script find you? Um, so I play Jasmine, who is Stevie's little sister, um, who played by like Ash, um, and um, in the, the story of it is you know Ash is grinding. And I think he grinds the like and does the most like in terms of what he does to make money for for his sister you know and just wanting to like see her happy and like their mum is in in the picture that makes um makes it very hard for them this is why he has to make this money and he does it for his sister and they're quite close but obviously there is conflict in just terms of like it's rough growing up in in the end you know um yeah sorry no 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 you go like, you know. i was gonna say because the, the chemistry between two is very very sweet and very very believable how did you guys chemistry build was you was there like a lot of reading and rehearsals or did you just meet it's even and just like yeah this works yeah um i just i walked him into his dressing room and i said hello i'm your sister we were like yeah let's go <laughs> yeah it was just it was from the beginning he was lovely he like we were able to just bounce off each other and, and obviously like yeah and just in between takes as well we'd have little jokes and and we'd bring that onto set which would just helped us like and I don't, I don't know the connection was just there that just felt like you know we were just brotherly sisterly we were there we had it you know and there's there are some really emotional moments and there's times when I was like oh baby girl I just want to hug you where did you go to draw for those emotional moments and to convey that on screen in such a powerful way yeah um I think it was just, it was sympathizing with just like a lot of kids I mean who guess like who are in those situations and you know just sometimes stuff happen in life and and you are quite young and you deal with it and and sometimes you don't even have siblings so you're looking for that like strength somewhere um, and I think I just felt with that because I sympathize with Jazz I, I didn't like she was in a vulnerable position um, and she did she had a brother but it was also like there was moments where she was like I actually have to do this alone and I can't do it so I think that's where it came from just that simple like and just knowing the age as well and knowing how old I was and or how old I am now and how old I was and would I be able to deal with that at that age I don't know but you know yeah so give me a, like a highlight on set. Highlight. Oh, so um, I think do you know what it was um when we were filming like in the flat we go to like um Taz's flat um and it was such a beautiful location but it was just such like good vibes that like, even though it was really hot it was during like the heat wave it was hot but the vibes were just that day yeah. Um, please, can you introduce yourself, tell us who you are and what role you play in Gaston. Do you want me to say it to... Okay, great. Hi, I'm Radat and I play Jasmine in Gaston. Thank you, honey. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well done. I'm good. How are you? Oh, good to see you. I mean... I'm, and this is a very, very good jacket. Thank you very much. Yeah, I had to uh, try and make a statement because um, all these young and beautiful actors, I've got to do something to be noticed. Where's it from? This is from a, a label called 2.9, which I'd never heard of, but apparently people who are in the know are happy with them. So. Steve, I think I want to steal it. You and a lot of other people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like this the whole time now. I'm on this, I'm on this, I'm on this. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. We, uh, I'm very pleased with this. Um, finished shooting the second season of that other thing that I do. Um, so life is good at the moment. Yeah. So in, where, how did this cut through the noise? Because I mean, you're doing big shows and big things, but this little indie, how did it cut through the noise? Why was it, why, did you, why were you attracted to it? Okay, well, there were a couple of things. First of all, I literally bumped into one of the producers, Hester, at a function. And she just mentioned that she had done a, sh a film called Boiling Point, you know, the, which I thought was terrific, and that they had something else that they might be something good for me. Then there also the fact that this gentleman, Mr. Ampont, uh, George, was involved in it, and I had seen the work that he'd done before. And then they sent me the script, I liked the story, and he wrote me a lovely letter, and I was like, okay, yeah, I have to be involved in this. And I was so pleased because also I had seen Steve in uh, Blue Story, and was like, okay, this is a nice bunch of people to be around. And so that was the, the main reason, yeah. And what, what's, what I love about Gaston is the fact that there is a positive black role model, which we don't want to harp on about these things. It gets tiring that we have to always like look at these reinforced stereotypes and make sure that we're not just boxing people in. And these narratives can be kind of... Sometimes we're judging these kind of stories about the road and the streets, but your character is very significant and very important. Did that speak? Is that another thing that spoke to you? Absolutely, because I think you're right. I think for some people this can be boring, but I think it's incredibly important. And particularly in the time that we're living in now. I mean, not to get too political, but when I was a young man in the dark ages, we felt, there was a point when we felt like the whole of the country was against black youth, people who were our age. And I suddenly I look around now and I see that there's something very similar happening now. 
You know what I mean? So it's very important that we say, whatever you've been through, there is a way to be positive. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to play this part, was because he has a past. He's not an angel. He has a past, but he's learned from it. And he's trying to look at these young bloods and go, look, don't do what I did. Because where you think you're going to end up, it's not going to be nice. So I think that's important. I, th I think that we have to do for our communities anyway. Speaking to a younger Steve, like, when you look at where you're at today, the, the journey that you've had, the career that you've had, is it, was it something that was like, yeah, I know I'm going to get there? Or was, is it, are you like pinching yourself still? Do you know what? It's kind of a bit of both, you know what I mean? Because there is the thing that you have when you're young, when you know, of course, when they see me, do you know what I mean? And then uh, reality hits you and how difficult it all is. Um, and so I was quite, con two or three years ago, I was quite content with my career because I was a jobbing actor. I mean, I still am. And then suddenly, uh, the double whammy of Russell T. Davis and It's a Sin and then Steve McQueen and uh, Thingy, suddenly people go, oh yeah, I remember that guy. And so then the last 18 months, two, three years has been incredible. But I'm still not quite where I want to be yet. So I was going to say, on that note, how do, you not, how do you not get bitter? Because it is, it's a long journey and there's a lot of roller coasters in this industry and the fact that sometimes the, the, the up moments come maybe later and you could have been like, I've been trying and trying and trying. Now you want to recognize me, but how do you keep yourself not bitter in those times? I think you have to recognize that your bitterness doesn't serve you. There's no point having that thing gnawing away at you. I mean, I've had my moments, don't get me wrong, where I've been just like, yeah, yeah, you should have got me, fool. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. But ultimately, no, life is too short. And there are so many, a myriad of reasons why you didn't get that job. It isn't that the whole industry just went, I don't want you to get it. It's just that my wife liked that actor, or, or whatever, or he plays golf with my son. There's so many things that you have no control over. So all you can do, and I learned this very early, is be extremely, as good as you can be, be as diligent as you can be and be as professional as you can be and then hope that the chips fall where they may. And what I forgot to do is tell you to introduce yourself, tell us who you are and what role you play in Gassed Up. My name is Steve Toussaint and I play the character of Roy. Thank you so much Steve, it's amazing to see you. You too darling, take care. Take care. Oh, you're right. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm good. You're looking like you're shy and stuff. Overwhelmed or? You're looking a bit shy. 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 Well, what about the suit? No, no, no. I'm coming to the suit. You're looking sharp, sir. Oh, did you say sharp? No. That's why I said you look shy. Yeah, well, you do look I'm sharp. Talk to the suit, right? Uh, yeah. no, no, let's. Can we zoom okay. in on the suit? Is that shy or is that no, no, that's, that's robotic? A shouting. Okay. Right. okay, good. Get a close up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a nice the wide master, angle shot. The master, the master, the master. I love it. How are you? I'm all right. I'm a bit nervous. And yeah, you're right. I'm a bit shy. Oh, no. This, we have but, to put our best foot forward, don't we, in these situations? What's been going on? Because from Hardstop, which blew our minds, really important documentary about a very pivotal time in London, then it was kind of quiet, and now you're back with this film. Or oh, it wasn't quiet. What's, what's been happening? My life has still been continuing. And, um, you know, I'm older and wiser, probably a little bit more cynical. I've still got two chips on, my sh on each shoulder. I'm a well-balanced individual in that sense. But no, really... What I want to talk about is how fortunate I feel I am um, and uh, to be here with Gas Up premiering at the London Film Festival. It's a London story and I wouldn't say it's a black film, it's got a it's multicultural cast, it's got Stephen Odebola, brilliant young talent starring in it. But I didn't want to make a film about young black people involved in crime. I wanted to make a film about a universal story of crime, of young people on the streets of a big city like London who haven't got what other people have got. And so they're going to go out and snatch it. This is a story about things that were happening in, on the streets of London, probably in Shakespearean times, in medieval times and will still be happening on the streets of London a hundred years from now. Maybe they won't be on mopeds, they'll be on hovercrafts or hoverboards. It's an old story and it's a universal story and that was my intention. And I'm so delighted that with the results. I think you did really well because I was speaking to the writer that this is a multicultural story and narrative always gets focused on black communities and it's just black boys running around going wild. I like the fact that multicultural. I like the fact there's different perspectives and I also like the fact that the hierarchy, it's not just black people doing stuff to black people. 
that was your intention and was it hard to convince the financiers that this story needs to be told in this way? Yeah. You know, it's always hard and we started writing Guest Up in 2017 and it was in 2021 that Amazon said, okay, we like this script. But, you know, they didn't suddenly say we like the script. They started by saying we like it, but actually we think this. You know, we, we like it this way and we, our response was whatever you say, Amazon. And actually to be getting long emails of notes from the likes of Amazon means they're interested in the film. And it was Amazon who said, actually, we don't need an ending, a cautionary tale at the end where the protagonist has got half his face burnt off by acid, the police sirens are closing in, he's about to be arrested and he's effed up. No. They said, how about a redemptive ending? And you know what? Telling me, talking to me about a redemptive ending for a film, that's like waving a red flag in front of a bull. And then I thought, okay, now we can do something with this. And I, I'm so pleased with the results and, you know, it's been a pleasure and really a, a privilege working with a lot of the young talents who are, you know, on screen in Get Up and some of them are behind the screen like Taz Skyler who wrote the script with me. Um, Archie Maddox was also involved in the screenwriting process. I've worked with the brilliant producing team, Bart Rispoli, Hester Ruoff, Ward Trauman, Stefan DeBart, as well as Rupert Preston and, and Ed Caffrey from Vertica. And, you know, I think we've made a film of a certain budget look like a film of that budget times two, or good. maybe even three. It looks Have good. you seen the film? I've seen it. Um, I just want to quickly say, um, introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do on this film, Gassed Up? Okay. Yep. Um, my name is Joel Jamponsa and I'm the director on Gassed Up. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take it.